Welcome to Online Math TV. Here we have a radical equation. And in this radical equation, it looks so as simple, it looks so as straightforward, but not as simple as you may think. And this radical equation, um, I want to find the solution to this radical equation. And from what I've observed so far, uh, there's no real solution to this radical equation. Let's check if there are real solution or no real solution to this radical equation. Okay, the question is x, times square root of x plus 1 equal to 0. What will be the possible value of x? We put down the question first. So we have solution. Now, before we go into the solving, if you're new to this channel, kindly subscribe. When you subscribe, turn on the bell notification button so that you get notified whenever we drop a wonderful video. Okay, let's go to the board now. We put down our question, which is x to the square root of x plus 1 equal to 0. So from here, what do we do? Let's send this one to this other side of the equation. And so we're left with x to the square root of x equal to minus 1. The radical is a consigned. So how do we handle this radical? Good. We take the square of everything of both sides of the equation. And so we're going to have this to be x to the power of 2 bracket the square root of x r to the power of square equal to minus 1 r squared. Okay, now if you look at this carefully, it is easy now. The square of minus 1 will give us 1. And the square of the square root of x, these two, we take care of this square root, which is the radical. And so we're left with your x to the power of 2 times x equal to 1, which is automatically s to the power of 3, because here is to the power of 1. So since the bases are the same, we add the exponent. Hence, we have here 3. There equal to 1. Easy. If we decide to take the cube root of both sides, we're going to come up with our s to be minus 1. And if you plug x minus 1 into this expression we have here, it will not give us zero. The left-hand side of the equation will not give us zero. Okay? So what we do here is this. Move this one to the left-hand side of the equation. And so we're going to have this to be s to the power of 3 minus 1 equal to 0. Now, if I raise this to the power of 3, it has not changed anything. Because 1 to the power of 3 will still give us 1. And so what will this give us? So let's move from here. And see what this gives us in turn. So from here, recall your algebraic identity, which says that if you have your x to the power of 3 minus y to the power of 3, this is equal to the bracket x minus y, close bracket, bracket your x squared plus your x y plus your y squared. Okay. So if you look at this, what we have here is similar to what we have here now. Okay, our x to the power of 3 is x to the power of 3. Our y to the power of 3 is 1 to the power of 3 here. So let's use this and bring out this. And so this now implies that our x to the power of 3 minus 1 to the power of 3 is equivalent to your bracket x minus 1 close bracket, bracket, your x squared plus your x dot 1, okay, there, plus your 1 squared. Okay. From here, mind you, we're having everything equal to 0 here on this other side too, okay? All right, so from here, we're going to have this to be bracket your x minus 1, the bracket your x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0. If we apply the zero product rule, then it means x minus 1 equal to 0, or our x squared plus x plus 1 equal to 0. Here we now have x equal to positive 1. But here for your case 1, which is our x equal to positive 1, if we plug positive 1 into our equation, it's not going to give us zero. And so this answer is rejected. Okay? Our x1 is rejected.
we reject this because it's not satisfy our equation. So if this is rejected, we go to our case two. So let's take case two. Where is our case two? Case two says that your x to the power of two plus x plus one equal to zero. Now this is a quadratic equation. Let's solve this quadratically. We cannot use factorization method to solve this. So let's use the our formula method. Applying our formula, we have our x equal to your minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. Good. Let's go ahead and bring out our a, b, and c from this quadratic equation. So here we have our a equal to positive 1, b equal to positive 1, and c equal to positive 1. Again, okay, let's proceed on this side. Okay. All right. So let's substitute these values into our quadratic equation. And so this will give us here our x equal to your minus, you will have 1 plus minus the square root of 1 squared minus 4 dot 1 dot 1. Okay? All over 2 dot 1. So this is equal to your minus 1 plus minus the square root of 1 minus 4 all over 2. Very easy. Okay, this is equal to your minus 1 plus minus the square root of minus 3 all over 2. Okay, here we are having your square root of minus 3, which could also be written, this you have here could also be written as the square root of minus 3 is equal to the square root of minus 1 times the square root of uh, 3. Okay, now the square root of minus 1, which is your minus 1, is the same thing as your i, which is your imaginary. Okay, so if it is your imaginary, then we can now rewrite everything here to be your uh, root 3i. Okay, so if we replace this with this, then we now have our expression here to be x equal to minus 1 plus minus your i square root of 3 all over your 2. Here we have two solutions from this. Okay, so let's get our x2 and x3 from this expression. So we now have our s2 and s3 from 1 minus 1 plus your i square root of 3 all over 2 or we have your minus 1 minus your i square root of 3 all over 2. Now we can rewrite these two expressions here now. So let's take our x2 is equal to your 1 all over 2 bracket your i root of 3 minus 1. Okay, this is our x2. Okay, this is our x2. Then our x3, we can again rewrite our x3, which is x3. This is equal to your minus 1 all over 2, the bracket your 1 plus your i root 3, okay, bracket close. Now, this is our x2, sorry, x3. This is our x3. Now, if you look at this S3, if you plug this into our initial equation, which is the radical, it's going to give us the wrong answer. So, this also is rejected. This also is rejected. So, the only accepted imaginary root that will satisfy our equation is this guy here. Okay? So, this is the only one that we plug into our um, initial equation to satisfy our equation, which will give the true solution to our radical equation. It turns means that this radical equation does not have a real solution, does not have a real root. Okay, so this is the end point 
to this uh, uh, simple but tough uh, radical uh, challenge, a radical equation. Okay, now this is all I must TV, and my name remains Jakes, as you all know. And if you're new to this channel, here we drop mathematical uh, videos every other day for our fun, for our learning. Okay, if you're new here, do not forget to subscribe. And when you subscribe, hit the bell notification button. If you like, hit it so hard that you break it. Don't worry about that. YouTube will provide another one for you. Okay, remember I love you and every one of us at Online Mass TV love you so much because you are always there. Bye for now.